Let's assume that you have your subject on a clean background and you had no problem cutting it out. But when you put your subject on a new contrasting background, the hair just doesn't look right. Something is wrong with the hair. That's when we can use blend modes to easily fix that in no time. Now keep in mind there are many other ways to do it. If this method does not work for you, please refer this video. Not all images are the same and there's no one technique that will work with everything. And as a bonus, we will also learn how to create interesting backgrounds and shadows. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back at the magical land of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. So first, let's start with a nice selection. And by the way, we're going to go through the entire process. If you want to go to just the technique, please skip to this duration. Thank you so much. So for the selection, we're going to use select and mask. So select any selection tool from here and then let's choose select and mask at the top. Just click on that. Now, once we are in the select and mask dialog box, determine what's going to be in the background. What is going to be the background color? To have the most contrast, let's change the view to white, on white, right? And let's decrease the opacity. If the opacity is zero, everything will show up irrespective of whatever you have selected or not. If the opacity is at 100, only the selected areas will show up. Right now, nothing shows up. Why? Because we have selected nothing. So let's keep the opacity somewhere in the middle, something like 57, and then select the quick selection tool at the top, and then just paint over the subject. Just paint over the areas which are definitely going to be inside the selection. Avoid painting on the messy areas of the hair. So once we have the basic mask in place, we can always check it by changing the view. We can change the view, of course, to on black and increase the opacity. As you can see, there are some areas extra which are selected. So with the same quick selection tool right there, you can hold the Alt key to change that to minus and then paint on the areas which you do not want. This is perfect. So let's subtract the additional extra areas right there. Now let's add back these areas. All right, now we might have to clean this with the brush. So have a look at the bottom right there, the third one. This is the brush. So if you just simply paint, it's plus, it's adding to it. If you hold the Alt key or the Option key, it will subtract from it. There is no intelligence going down here. It's just erasing that. Or in other words, masking it out. All right. Now that we have done for the critical areas, we're going to use a special tool called the Refine Edge Brush Tool, the second one. So let's select that and then just simply paint on only those areas. You can change the view back to white and see how it looks like. You can increase the opacity if you want to and then just simply paint. See, it's simply getting back easily. All right. Now, I'm also going to paint on the eyelashes, as you can see. These are also not perfect. Let's see if that fixes it. Yeah, it pretty much fixes that. Now, we need to adjust this with the brush. So, let's select the brush and erase these areas. All right, so now we have a pretty nice selection. Let's change the view to black and let's check. But there is a problem with the hair, right? And we're going to fix that later. But anyway, the masking is perfect. If you change the view to black and white, you'll be able to perfectly see the mask. I might have to use the Refine Edge tool and just paint over here a little bit. And there we have it. A very nice mask. Once you're happy with it, you can, of course, change the output to Layer Mask at the bottom right here and hit OK. Now we have a mask. Now let's create a background. And this is where the challenge comes in. When you choose a contrasting background, the hair just doesn't match. So let's create a solid color adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then simply choose solid color. And let's choose the red color. Something like this. Let's go for saturation of 93. This kind of works for us and hit OK. And we're going to keep it beneath the subject. As you can see, the hair just doesn't look right. It even looks worse than black. Now to make the background kind of interesting, let's add a spotlight effect. It's very easy to do. So simply create a gradient. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient. We're going to click on in here once, just single click 
and choose a gradient where there's color to transparent. The second one is foreground to transparent and we can choose that. If none of that exists, just make sure the top slider has opacity zero on the right hand side and 100 on the left hand side. Now we can totally remove this slider and have just one color right here. So let's choose a brighter red, something like this. This works, this looks nice. Hit OK once you're satisfied, hit OK again. Now, we want this as a spotlight. You can keep it in any style you want. You can actually move it up and down, but I want a spotlight. So simply change the style from linear to radial. And we're gonna keep it right there as a spotlight, something like this. And let's increase the scaling because we want it to be big. All right, 240 looks nice. 245, all right. We can move it if we want to. I'm gonna keep it at that and hit OK. Now, before we move forward with fixing the hair, it's very important to fix the hard edges first because we're gonna make a couple copies of the layer and it can be problematic later. So let's zoom in and check if the hard edges are OK. So if I simply change the background to black, just momentarily, let's change it to black. As you can see, there's a thin line and we need to remove it now. So how do we remove it? Well, there are lots of ways. So first of all, hold the control or command and click on the layer mask right there. Now, we need to take it a little in, push it a little in. So to push the selection in, go to select and then modify, contract. Let's contract it by, let's go for one pixels, hit okay. So it's inside by one pixel. Now we need to fill the outside with black. So press Control shift i Command shift i to invert the selection because right now it is selecting the subject. We want everything else. Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black, come to the mask and then just erase it. Now, if you want to hide the marching ants momentarily, you can always press Control or Command H. It's still there, it's just hidden. Don't paint on the hair, only on the hard edges. And also paint there a little bit. There you have it. And simply remove it. It's essential to do that beforehand. Not all areas need it, just some areas. There we are. Yeah, everything else looks nice. You might have to fill in these areas. So change the color to white. And by the way, the selection is still active. So press Control or Command H. As you can see, the selection is still active. And I want to fill the inside. So let's again invert the selection. Control Shift I, Command Shift I to invert it. Now this time, take the brush white as the foreground color. And I'm just going to fill this area. That's it. Control or Command D to deselect that. And there you have a nice starting selection. You can now delete the black. We don't need it. This was just for reference. Now to mask the hair properly with blend modes, we need to understand a little bit concept right here. Have a look, zoom in and observe what the hair should be doing. If you have a look closely, the hair is dark, right? So the hair should be darkening things. But have a look, it's brightening the reds. And why is it doing so? Because hair previously was in a light gray background and it's so thin that it takes the color from the gray background and the thin strands of hair turn into gray. And that is problematic. Instead, it should have been darkening the reds. Why? Because it's a dark hair. If it was a bright blonde hair, it might have been brightening it. So just figure out what the hair should be doing and what it is doing right now. Right now, it is brightening it. We don't want that. What we want is that since this is dark hair, it should have been darkening it, right? And what is the blend mode that darkens? Multiply. If it should have been brightening it, you should have changed that to screen. But in this case, since it's darkening it, let's select the layer and let's name it subject. Multiply and change the blend mode from normal to multiply. You'll instantly see the change. There you go. Have a look, every strand of hair shows up. See how nicely? Now let me zoom out and let me show that to you again. So this is normal. Around the edge, things are getting brighter. It shouldn't happen, it should darken. And that is why let's change the blend mode simply to have a look at this area as well when we change to multiply at the top. See how detailed it is? Isn't that amazing? But the problem is, apart from the edges of the hair, 
everything starts to darken the background. We do not want that. We just want it in some areas. So what do we do? Let's make a copy of subject multiply, control or command J, and this should be normal. Change that back from multiply to normal. And you can name this subject normal. Now, we need to mask the subject normal out from the edges so that the multiply can take over just the edges of the hair, right? Making sense? So all you gotta do is this already has a nice mask. We don't wanna disturb it. So what if you wanna create multiple masks for just one layer? Well, put it inside a group. So put the subject normal inside a group by making sure it is selected and then press Control or Command G. Now here's an advantage of a group. It can have a mask of its own. So with the group selected, create another mask. And you can also name this subject normal. Now, select the mask, take the brush, black as the foreground color. You can decrease the flow to somewhere about 30% and then just paint around the edges. That's it, that's what you gotta do. Easy, right? Softly and gently. We don't wanna get in. If we get in too much, see the red's gonna show up on the hair? We don't want that. So let's just paint only on the edges and be soft about it. We do not want to go inside. Let's increase the flow just outside. You can take your time to be as gentle as possible. Now let's zoom into the eyelash and see what we can do here. And there we are. Have a look at the hair. Isn't that fantastic? It was so easy to do. Now you can stop watching the video because we have done the technique. But if you want to learn how to create some textures in the background and some fantastic shadows, stick around. Now to create some interesting shadows, we need to make use of the multiple drop shadows inside of the Layer Styles dialog box along with drop shadow separation. Let me show you how. First of all, double click on the right hand side of subject multiply layer. This opens up the Layer Styles dialog box. Here, in mine, you can see multiple drop shadows, but if you don't see in yours, all you gotta do is to click on the plus sign right there, this keeps on adding a drop shadow, right? See, it added one extra. Anyway, now if you want all of the shadows to be aligned in one angle, keep use global light checked. Now let's zoom in. I want them all aligned. Now here's how professionals create drop shadows by dragging it. So simply just drag it like this. Easy, isn't it? So let's zoom out a little bit and let's see how we want the shadow to be. So this seems to be a nice place. Once you have dragged into that area, you can control the opacity if you want to. Increase the size to add the softness to it. So I want it absolutely soft and not that much opacity, just a touch. Maybe 25 is fine. Now let's add one more drop shadow. Let's check this as well. Now with this one, first of all, let's decrease the size to see where it is and move it. We want it a little closer, like that, and then increase the size. This is okay for this distance, and we're gonna decrease the opacity. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Let's check one more, and decrease the size again to see where it exactly is, and this time we're gonna move it closer, like that, and play with the opacity and size. You can move it further if you want to, See how multiple drop shadows are helping us? All right. So this size seems to be fine. Once you're happy with everything, just hit OK. But there's a problem. There shouldn't be so much shadow behind the hair. How do we fix that? Well, just simply erase it. But how do we erase it? For that, we need to separate the drop shadow. And the way to do that is simple. First of all, select the layer which has all the drop shadows and then go to layer, layer style, and then create layers. Hit okay. See, now it is divided. All of the shadows that we added is divided into three layers. Now we can simply mask it out, mask out whatever we want. First of all, let's organize them by putting them in a group. 
So select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one, all of them are now selected. Then press Ctrl or Command G. Now let's name the group Shadows. This is just organization. All right, let's open the group and create a mask. Select the first one, create a mask and take the brush, black as the foreground color and simply just erase the hair area. Similarly, do the same with the second one and the third one as well. Create a mask and erase the hair area softly. The first one, it's gone mostly from the hair, but we want some areas back. So we'll go back to this one and with white, we'll fill up a little bit of the area. So there has to be some shadows, right? So this is fine. This is looking fantastic. Now let's add some texture to it. Let's collapse this and have a look. This is nice, isn't it? But before we add some texture, this area just doesn't look right. It seems like it needs a little more shadows. So let's open the shadow layer and inside of that, let's create one more and just black selected and flow at about 5%. We'll just paint with a soft brush. That's it. Right here. There we are. Interesting. To add some texture, you can bring in a photo and change the blend mode to overlay or create your own, do whatever you want. For this example, I'm going to show you a simple trick. So just above the background, select the topmost background layer. So we had a color fill in the bottom and top of that we have a spotlight. Just above that we need to create the texture. So create a simple new layer and then go to filter, render. This is interesting, fibers. Now you can generate some interesting fibers right there. You can increase the variance if you want to. And then just click on randomize to see what you like. It just randomly generates fibrous textures in other words. Hit OK. And then change the blend mode to whatever you want. Let's change it to overlay. If you think it's too much, you can always decrease the opacity. You can keep it at about maybe 20% or this can be your background too, your choice. But a little bit of texture does go a long way. And for our Patreon members, I have something special for you. So if you want to add some noise or grain to it to make it interesting, I have an action. So if you're a Pixinperfect Patreon family member, you can download this Pixinperfect Realistic Grain action and you can choose whatever value of grain you want. So for this example, I'm gonna choose probably 25 or Let's go for a higher number, 40, for texture and play it. It automatically adds some realistic grain to your photo. Or maybe you want to add some cinematic grain at the top. You can do that too. Maybe just a 20% grain at the top. Select the topmost layer and play it. It automatically adds these realistic grain effects. All right, so that's how to use blend modes to mask hair in Photoshop. All you got to do is this. Once you have created the mask, the bottom one, set that to multiply. And the top one should be normal. And in the top one, you can put it inside a group and mask away the edges. As simple as that. And on top of that, you can add some interesting backgrounds or maybe some textures. That's upon you. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick, or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.